I am still recovering from last episode's Tribal Council. It was amazing. It's time to wrap up reality. I'm your host, Tom Vasey. Welcome to TV Talks with Tom. Survivor Edge of Extinction episode 8. What an episode we had there, ladies and gentlemen. It was absolutely incredible. Now, most of this episode is obviously going to be talking about the Tribal Council that happened because I think about half the episode was actually Tribal Council. So, honestly, I can't wait to delve into that and it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Okay, so just before again I get started, I'd like to remind you all I've got a Twitter. I'll put it in the comments, uh, not the comments, yeah, I'll put it in the description at TV Talks with Tom. Uh, those of you who will follow will get a follow back. This is just a bit of promotion to try and get the channel going a bit more and I'd love to sort of interact with all the fans as well I think that would be absolutely great so I keep saying absolutely okay so Varta night 22 that's where it started okay so we have war dog claiming he controlled the vote so he's telling everyone yeah yeah I I, uh, I, I illustrated what happened there I told everyone what to do and everyone followed me this then led on to the topic of conversation which our karma fractured because it seemed as though there were because obviously the blind side of Eric last week also blindsided Ron and Julie, who were completely in the dark about it. They did not have a clue what was going on because they were left out the circle. They were not brought in on the deal. So they are feeling, you know, they, they probably feel like they're excluded and they probably feel quite lonely at this point. That does sort of develop in the episode and we see how they're feeling after after the events of the last tribal council. We um, also saw the fact that Ron and Julie potentially don't trust them anymore after what they did. However, our karma, did karma really think it through? Did they realise that Ron and Julie are probably going to defect them after that because they're, they're probably not going to want to work with them if they're leaving them out of the loop like that? So Ron was asking Gavin about what happened. He was saying, why well, wasn't I brought in on stuff? And Gavin was sort of just trying to explain his gameplay. He was sort of saying, you know, I wanted to, have a, like, I wanted to take the big first move before they have a go at me. Fair play to him. I honestly think that was, as I said last week, I did think it was great to see some people stepping up to the play and giving us some gameplay that haven't necessarily given us gameplay before. So well done to Gavin, but also you got to think about damage control afterwards in which how are people going to react and where are lines going to be drawn. Ron was disappointed because obviously he's been trying the whole time to have this karma strong thing. He's been in control with Eric. Essentially his best friend in the game is taken out or his partner in crime at least because them two have been working together to make sure everyone is strong together and everyone's working together so they can make power moves within the game so the fact that karma have you know scattered and they've gone right we're voting this person but we're not going to tell you this is a pivotal point in the game in which more lines are, are being drawn within the tribe gavin does say to the lesser three afterwards that he's willing to work with them so obviously because there was the deal last week where the Lesu 3 would work with Gavin, Victoria and Julia. So Gavin continues to say he's willing to work with them plus Julia and Victoria. So that will also be a power alliance I would think if they, if they do decide to work together. I think uh, fantastic gameplay last week on behalf of the Lesu 3. They were at the bottom of the tribe like you know they when it came to the votes they potentially one of them was going to go. Wardog rallied the troops he went up to people and said how about we do this vote. Wardog did say he controlled the vote. I don't think he controlled the vote. I think he was a pivotal part of the vote. He couldn't have done it without the help of Gavin, Victoria and Julia. Because Wardog was at the bottom of the tribe, along with Lauren and Wentworth. The fact that he had managed to persuade them was, uh, you know, that's very, very respectable. You know, I, I can say that was brilliant gameplay. Hopefully the jury will be able to see that if Wardog does make the final three, because that was a big part of the game. But in conclusion, I don't think Wardog did control the vote. However, he was a massive part of it as he did influence a lot that went on. Another revelation we saw last episode was the difference in opinion between David and Devons. We've seen them be very, very tight all the way th uh, throughout the show so far. We've seen them work together and also when the Lesu didn't, when the Lesu tribe did not stick together. Them two always stuck up for each other, which is great to see. Devons and David are two of my favourites, I really like seeing them both play and I think they're a fantastic alliance however we did see as I said, a difference in opinion which caused a little fracture between them, the two of them, obviously David has one side of the immunity idol whereas Devons has the other, so there was a little squabble between that, who's going to get custody of the idol they seem to patch things up pretty quickly, I like to see that because honestly, David and Devons are a fantastic alliance and if they can stick together, they have quite a lot of I wouldn't say power, but they have a lot of potential in like future games. So I really hope that they do stick together. And as I said, 
they did manage to mend things up pretty quickly, so they're back on track. They did sort of push the idle talk sort of slightly away. They didn't need to talk about it immediately, but they do talk about it further on in the episode. In my opinion, I do think, well, not in my opinion, I think it'd be in the majority of people's opinion, this tribal council that does happen is the craziest tribal, one of the craziest tribal councils ever. So I think it was almost vital that they had to talk about this idol before going in. But we will talk about that later. First, we're going to talk about the Edge of Extinction and how Eric has just gone there after the blind side last week. So he does feel horrible after being blindsided. He was just he, he wasn't as emotional as other players. He just sort of seemed a bit drained. He was sort of sat around looking around at people and he didn't seem to be joining in that much. So at least we didn't see him really, really upset, but I think de- definitely mentally drained. Because boredom has hit, and I think boredom's hit for everyone. Think about how long Reem's been there now. She was the first voted off, and she has she's been there since the start, pretty much. So fair dues to Reem, honestly. She she's done quite well. And do you know hats off to them all really for staying there. Um, Joel was sizing up the competition he was sort of seeing what's going on he was basically analysing everyone and sort of saying I don't think anyone's going anywhere I think I think he said Reem was too invested Chris ain't going anywhere Eric ain't going anywhere Aubrey ain't going anywhere is that everyone on Edge of Extinction? I think it is um, I hope I haven't forgot about anyone there but I believe that's everyone on Edge of Extinction and I think Joel's right there nobody's going anywhere everyone wants to, everyone wants to be back in the game Back to Varta now where we saw a lot more gameplay. Straight away, Devons and Julie were talking about last night's tribal. As a few of the castaways were left out on the blind side last time, Devons and Julie want to work together. And they want to rope Ron in as well because Ron was left out the, 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 the loop as well. We saw Devons and Julie they, they did talk more game. They were like, definitely, we're going to work together. Devons and David want to get in on it as well. Devons, David, Ron and Julie want to work together and they potentially want to rope one more person in. Whether that person be someone who else hasn't been in the loop, potentially Aurora, they do not know, but sort of they were discussing it, you know. It wasn't um, set in stone, but they were discussing it as a potential alliance. Julie felt very, very, very stressed. She felt lonely and she was missing her family. I can completely sympathise with her because she did, like, you know, last week, the fact that she was left out the loop and honestly she must feel depleted because Julie has played quite an honest game so far. She hasn't been nasty to anyone. She hasn't betrayed anyone. She's been loyal. She's been kind and she's just been nice to everyone. So for people to go do that to her, obviously it's Survivor. You, you, you've got to expect, you know, blind sides and I, can't, I don't want to say nasty things, but, you know, unexpected things to happen. But then again, Julie hasn't called for any of that. So, but she's been left out the loop. So I can understand why she feels lonely and she's missing her family. Gavin and Julia were discussing the next vote. They said David could be a potential target. These targets, pretty much like throughout the episode, everyone's name was getting thrown around. Again, David isn't set in stone, so we're going to see a lot more names being thrown around before we get to the Mega Tribal Council of the Ages. Time for my second favourite part of the episode, people. It's the immunity challenge. Jeff tells everyone to come in, as usual, and he tells them the rules. So I'll just quickly go over them again so everyone understands and remembers what actually happened in the immunity challenge. Okay, so you have to stand on a narrow beam whilst balancing a ball on a wooden bow. So at regular intervals, you have to move further down the beam and it gets more and more narrow, which, which means harder to balance. If you fall or your ball drops, you're out. Last person standing wins immunity for themselves. Just like usual, everyone begins to start, and my initial thoughts were, wow, this this is really difficult. It looked extremely hard to balance that ball on a ball. I mean, it's it's like a semicircle, essentially, that you're, you're balancing it on. So, And the fact that you sort of, your feet are balancing on a narrow beam as well makes it even more difficult. Gavin was straight away, he, his, he was wobbling his ball all over the place. It was tilting left, right, and centre, but he, he managed to, to bring him back, and I thought it was brilliant recovery. So well done to Gavin on that part. And the same happened for Devons as well. Devons was wobbling all over, but he also had a great recovery as well. You could see flies and insects on people's faces, you know, so that's that's a massive distraction as well. And you're obviously going to want to like, itch you, because in reality, if an insect or fly comes up to your face, you sort of want to like swash it out the way. You want to like sort of throw your arm around to sort of get it out the way, but they can't do that because they're balancing a ball on a ball. So concentration is key. We see War Dog is the first to drop his ball after losing balance. I'm pretty sure last week War Dog was also early to drop, so War Dog has improved himself too well in these com- in these physical competitions. So he needs to potentially up his game if further down the line. If he requires immunity, then he's going to need to try and get it. So Julie was the second to drop after that. 
Julie was the um, first person to win Soul Immunity, so to see her drop that early was quite a shock. I thought she'd last a bit longer, but as I said earlier, she is drained mentally, physically, everything, so she is struggling, and you can sort of understand where she fell. I'll just remind everyone that Julie and Aurora are the two people who've won Soul Immunity so far. Okay, so before, War Dog, uh, obviously War Dog and Julie were the first to fall. It, they then have to move down to the next stage of the beam, and straight after moving down, Ron drops his ball. Devons continues to sort of move a lot, and he's balancing at left, right and centre, but he's wobbling all over the place, and he eventually drops as well. At this point, there is two men left and five women left, so it's heavily led by women in this challenge so far. But then, the tables turn, Aurora drops the ball, Victoria drops the ball, and Lauren drops the ball. Whilst we're at Lauren, I will just say how much respect I have for Lauren. I think her physical side of the of the game is second to none. I think she's probably got the best um, out of ever. Even though she hasn't, I don't think she's won any any sort of competition. She might have won one tribal uh, competition when she was in Lesu, but when it as going for herself, she's always making it really really far. Considering she blacked out last week and then she still makes it to what I think final. Five, final four of the competition this week. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, final final five, I think, of the competition this week. That's that's brilliant. I respect that so much. And she's always doing really, really well in physical comp. So well done to Lauren. I've got immense amount of respect for that. I also hope if she does make the final three, jury have kept an eye on how good her physical game is. So Wentworth is the next to drop. So then we have the final three in this competition. We have Julia, Gavin and David. Then Julia drops. That was a turnout for the books because obviously there was five women left, two men left, and the two men have made the final two. We have Gavin and David. David has competed in a previous uh, season in this same challenge before, so he's had practice. So he's probably got the best uh, the, the best chances of, of winning this challenge. But he, did, he didn't win that last time, so he wants to redeem himself. But unfortunately, David drops his ball. But well done, Gavin has won the challenge, so Gavin won individual immunity. Well done, Gavin, considering he was wobbling about at the start, but they had the great recovery. He has won the challenge, so well done to Gavin. Immense, immense amount of respect. On the way back to camp, Gavin said that if David goes home at the Tribal Council tonight, he can claim he was the reason he was sent home. Now, I have mixed opinions on, on this statement because I thought, yes, Gavin did win the immunity, but just because he's won immunity doesn't mean he was the reason David went home. He was a part of it, don't get me wrong. He was, you know, he influenced it because he stopped David from getting immunity. But he can't necessarily say he was the one who sent him home because it, obviously it's a group movement, isn't it? He has to rope people in first and people have to agree to the, the decision. So he can't take sole responsibility for that. Uh, however, he can take responsibility as a part of it, but not fully. So that's what I thought on that statement. Right, so let's talk about the last part of Varta and a bit of strategizing and gameplay before we move on to Tribal Council. I know it's early to move on to Tribal Council, but it was in the episode, but it was definitely worth it, in my opinion. Okay, so Varta. Everyone, straight away when they got back to the camp, they're splitting up and scattering everywhere. There was groups of people at the campfire, there were groups of people further down the beach, at the rocks, everywhere. Everyone was moved about, and that, again, caused paranoia, it caused stress, and it caused confusion amongst castaways. Devins tells Gavin and Julia that the Lesu three are extremely tight and they always vote together, no matter what. That's vital information that Devins has gave them, so they know maybe they can't trust them. Devins then tells Victoria, so... Now Devons has been pitching this to quite a few people. He's trying to rope them in and again, good gameplay on Devons' part because he's wearing his heart on his chest and he's he's literally he blew up last week at War Dog as well. So everyone knows where he stands and he can just say what he likes basically. And I think maybe slightly it's not the best social game, but strategy wise, I think it's very, very good. If you can't tell, Devons is definitely one of my favourites, if not my favourite, which is why I keep saying good things about him. But I'm trying to be unbiased here, which is why I've got to say, you know, he's he's not, he hasn't got the best social game, but definitely when it comes to strategy, he's acing it. And to be fair, he won the, the battle back in the uh, Edge of Extinction as well, so that's sort of good physical game as well. He's been proving himself slightly. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, Kelly is worried. Kelly Wentworth is worried that if they vote David out, then karma people, the other karma people will go back to karma strong and vote one of the lessus out. So that's Kelly thinking ahead again. Good gameplay for Kelly there. She's thinking about because War Dog just says right, we're voting this person out. Let's jump in straight away and take them out. Whoa, hold on, War Dog. 
Kelly has been rational here. She's thinking, right, okay, let me think this through. She's played this game more than once and she knows how the game works. She's gone, right, what are the repercussions? What could potentially happen? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? She's looking at everything as a whole. Well done to Kelly Wentworth because she's a legend for doing that. Um, Ron is, Ron's name is thrown around as a potential target by Lauren. Lauren said, how about we take out Ron? Because Ron, again, he was the, the ringleader of Karma along with Eric. So how about we just finish them off while we're at it? She believes that if they take out Ron, it's going to alienate Julie. I like Julie again. I wouldn't like to see her alienated. But I've got to say, if they were to take out Ron, Julie probably would be alienated. She'd probably gravitate to what, more towards uh, Devons and David. But I think by alienating her, that's more power for the lesser three, I guess. So fair play for Lauren for shouting that out. So Lauren does pitch this plan to Julia. And Julia wants to reunite Karma Strong, but she doesn't say this to Lauren. Julia says she wants to reunite Karma Strong and take out Kelly Wentworth because although they've been working together, they've been distracted for the fact that Kelly Wentworth is an absolute powerhouse. She she could she could potentially win the game if they don't take her out. So they need to continue to focus. Because think about it, the whole way through the game, many people have been going, let's take out Kelly Wentworth, let's take out Kelly Wentworth. But then the plan flips and they end up taking out someone who isn't that much of a threat. So they really do need to focus on getting Kelly out at some point. A lot of gameplay from Julia. Again, as I said last week, she, she stepped up to the plane. She's gone, right, let's do this. Let's let's show people that I can play. However, when you play like this, you got to remember, don't play too hard, too fast. Because she's gone from not playing that much to full speed ahead, full throttle, and no breaks so she needs to be very 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 careful what she's doing the main question after the end of this was will ron and julie have trust for the karma people because they were left out the loop last week so the fact that julia wants to reunite karma strong is a bold move and i think it's slightly patronizing because the fact that they have blindsided ron julie and they're like hey how about we work together it's almost like the situation where war dog said to, to devons how about we work together then devons blew up at them. The difference is that Ron and Julie did not blow up at Julia. Due to Karma not being able to decide who they want to vote out, Victoria did start comparing the strongest part of potential alliances that they could take a go at. So she was having a look who's the strongest part of the Lesu 3 and who's the strongest part of Devons and David. So she thought that cost, she, she, no matter what happened, she definitely wanted to split up an alliance, but whether that be Devons and David or the Lesu 3 was up to karma, but she couldn't decide. So, in my opinion, I think the strongest member of Lesu 3, well, War Dog's the leader, but Kelly Wentworth is the biggest threat. So, but I think Lauren is, should probably be safe. David and Devons, Devons has proven himself to be quite abrupt sometimes, so that would sort of put a hindrance on social games sometimes. David is very good physically and he's played the game before so personally i think david's probably more of a threat more than devon's in the end though they did settle on kelly wentworth because they wanted to split up the less who three they feel like the less who three are stronger than david and devon's julie has doubts about being in on this plan because she was blindsided last week of course you're gonna have doubts you're gonna have trust issues and you're gonna feel paranoid that people are gonna flip again and leave you out the loop which should make you feel even worse than you already do even though people had settled on Kelly Wentworth, Gavin was expressing his opinion. He'd still rather get David out. He feels like David's more of a threat than Kelly because he couldn't reveal it to everyone. But Gavin did have a side deal with Kelly Wentworth because they're working with the Lesu 3. Ron keeps telling people he doesn't want to go home. It was so funny. I actually laughed out loud at one point because everyone's like discussing game and Ron was just like, I really just don't want to go home. Like, nobody brought your name up, Ron. Calm down, man. Stop being paranoid because that's all it was. That really because... Like, even though people were just discussing the game, Ron just seemed to sort of keep going on about himself, which, you know, it was blowing his cover, really, because he, in previous weeks, he's been shown to be this sort of guy who can control people, and, you know, he's he's co he's a cool leader, and now he's sort of like, every single time someone brings up someone's name, he's like, please don't send me home, I don't want it to be me, just calm down, Ron, lay low, man, and then he can survive a couple more weeks, maybe, or even to the end, we'll see, honestly, but you need to work on your strategy rather than just crying to people that you don't want to go home. Back to some sweet, sweet idle talk now between David and Devons. Even though they've got a part each, they have decided they definitely want to use the idol at tonight's tribal council. Many names have been thrown around. They don't want to take a risk. However, David's spidey sense was telling him to use the idol on himself, and Devons agreed, strangely. So I think it's looking like they're definitely going to use the idol on David. Then everyone sort of sat around the campfire, and it was extremely strange. Everyone was looking at each other... 
they're give, giving each other really weird looks and some people just had their heads down. I saw Julia nodding at Wentworth, Aurora was sleeping and Victoria was scraping the pants so she didn't want to make eye contact with anyone. And Gavin, he came into the camp with his head down, not wanting to speak to anyone. So it was definitely a mix of emotions and Kelly did not feel good about that. She said she potentially wants to also play her idol. Well, she didn't say also because she didn't know that they were going to play the idol, but she, we did. So she definitely, well not definitely, but potentially wants to play her idol. Dun, dun, dun. You know what time it is. It's time for Tribal Council, but not just Tribal Council. In my opinion, the best Tribal Council I've ever seen. What a Tribal Council we had there, folks. And let's talk about it because this is, it started 25 minutes into the episode, which means it's going to be a long, long Tribal Council. We've got a lot to talk about, more than usual. So let's delve right in and discuss what happened in the best ever Tribal Council, in my opinion. Okay, so. Dewey arrives. Reem, Chris, Aubrey, Joe and Eric showed up. So that's, uh, as, as we said, the people have been sent to Extinction Island and haven't decided to leave the game yet. Jeff straight away brought up the discussion of a blind side. Julie brought up her feelings. She was saying that, you know, she doesn't feel good after the blind side and she's lost her trust with everyone. So she doesn't trust anyone fully. Aurora was discussing the important factors of a blind side. She was going through all the key components in a successful blind side and what the end goal is essentially. I think she said it doesn't essentially matter about all the sort of flip flopping before. It all matters at the end goal and what people want to sort of see as the outcome of a blind side. And that's what really is the most important factor of a blind side. I sort of did agree with that because I do think some things are important before a blind side. Plans have got to be put in place and essentially it's all about trust and who will go through and who won't go through with it. Uh, Wentworth said she has doubts and she's worried that Karma has gotten back together and she did discuss how she's seen a couple of looks towards each other in the camp earlier. She brought that up and she's exposed it straight away. Devins was being quite vocal. He was showing honesty and he called out a few people for not informing him about the vote. She, he, he said, I, I can't remember the exact names that he brought up, but he did say, I think he brought up about three names for saying, uh, you didn't bring me at the vote. You essentially let the clock run out and didn't tell me anything about it. So I'm left out the loop. There's Devon's, you know, being vo just as vocal as usual. And again, his social game isn't brilliant, but, you know, at least you can see he wears his heart on his chest. Next, we saw Julie getting a bit upset. She started crying after she said, uh, she reiterated what she said earlier in the episode. She said she felt physically and mentally drained. So whilst that was going on, though, more gameplay started to emerge because Wentworth was whispering to Julia, are we good? And she nodded back and said, yeah, and she was straight up there. She said, so obviously know that there's a deal going on there. And that's initially what people went into Tribal Council thinking. They thought that they had a deal between Julia, Victoria, Gavin. Also Aurora, I think, was roped in. Plus the Lesu 3. So that's essentially what they thought. However, things were due to change after many people were exposed and brought up. Julia essentially announces that there was something going on between herself and Wentworth because Devins called them out for whispering and Julia said like oh I'm just laughing at the fact that Wentworth just asked me if we're still good she basically said in front of everyone we have a deal people everyone look at us and that is when the game started to flip upside down Aurora started to express how she doesn't like the way the Lesu tribe have acted after disagreements and how they've uh, they've gone against their own actions and stuff like that because when Karma had the blind side they sort of didn't kick off at each other whereas Lesu did Devons did not like the way they carried on she sort of accused them of not owning their actions then which I thought was a bit strange because they did Devons hasn't been messing about he sort of straight up said you know I don't want to work with you so they did own their actions but then we saw Devons, David and Wardog, they all banded together strangely because Wardog isn't on the best of terms with, with uh, Devons at the moment. And they also, they all went, yeah, we're dysfunctional. You know, we, we definitely don't want to work together. So they, that, he, do you know, I love the phrase, nothing unites people like a common enemy. And that is essentially true. Definitely one of my favourite phrases. And that's exactly what we saw there. Devons did start rallying the troops after that, which was brilliant. He looked at everyone and went, right. Karma is trying to control the game, but if the Lesu 5 and Ron and Julie all band together, they can work as a team and take out one of the Karma and stop it being Karma strong. I couldn't believe how vocal Devins was being. He's gone from being from the edge of extinction to coming back in the game and being one of the most vital players in the game. So, And obviously I, I, Devins is my favourite player, so it was great to see that happen. Julia accuses Devins of being a passenger. There was gasps from the jury at that point. Gasps from the jury, gasps from the tribe. Everyone was shocked at how heated this was getting. And this isn't as heated as it gets yet. This is just the start. Uh, so 
Devins is accused of being a passenger, and she said, like, you're only frustrated because, you know, you're not in, an, you're, you're not in on any of the plans. And Devin sort of begged to differ. He thought, no, Julia, you're just sort of trying to control the game and you're not getting your way. Uh, Devins continued to rally the troops and saying that they can take the power. And Julie said, Julie literally went, yep, I, I agree with, uh, with Devins here. And this is when things started to flip. We saw people going... Like Julia really started to panic, you know, she was she had her hands in her head and she was thinking, Oh god, like she was trying to play cool. But at the same time, you could just tell she was she was really, really, really stressed at this point. So there was gonna be a lot more gameplay to go on if she was to get her own way in this tribal council. It's time for a whisper chain, people. We saw Wardog whispering to Ron if he wants to vote Aurora. This was the time things started to heat up. He said, you know. I'll vote for Aurora if you vote for Aurora. We can take the we can take the vote here. That was quite mad to see because obviously going into this tribal, we had seen that there was a Lesu 3 deal also with Victoria, Gavin and Julia. So Wardog flipping about there straight away saw that. Where does Wardog's loyalty lie? Like, is he really trustworthy to go on like that? Um, next we saw like what he, Wardog did say to Ron, he can get other people to vote Aurora if Ron and Julie do too. He can rally the troops and then they are safe for the week. Wentworth then got up and started to whisper to Aurora, so she moved over to the other side of, of the council and she started to whisper to Aurora. We didn't exactly see what they said to each other. Wardog uh, whispering to, to Lauren, Julie and Ron at the same time. So more and more people are getting brought in on this whisper chain. Devins then was whispering to David. I saw David whispering to Wentworth and then Ron called David and Devins over to whisper to them. So everyone is whispering to each other. There was a couple of people left out the loop there. Julia and Gavin. Now, this is ironic. Literally, if you told us a week ago that we'd see Julia and Gavin left out of the loop this week, I would have laughed because we saw the the fact that they left people out of the loop last week. It has completely flipped and done a 180 degree turn, which is mad to see and also brilliant for the Survivor fans to see because we love a tribal council in which there's lots of drama and lots of gameplay. Say what you want. Some people I've, I've seen on social media, a lot of people call it confusing. I can understand where they're coming from completely because there was a lot going on. You know, people were saying one thing, then people were saying the next. But then you got to agree. I, I saw someone commented on a social media post. I saw that said, "This you got to remember that the motto of the game is outwit, outplay, and outlast." So essentially, that's what they were doing. They, they were outwitting, they were outplaying, and they were outlasting because the game was changing, the dynamics were changing, and you've got to change with it. Are you going to be the next to be voted out? Simple as that. So I thought it was great to see all this gameplay happening. Now, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to talk about a camera shot here, which I thought was amazing. The camera showed Julia, Gavin, Aurora sat at one end of the tribal council and everyone else was sat at the other end whispering to each other. Now, I thought that was amazing. That was like a, a visual representation of where people stand in the tribe rather than people talking about stuff. You could literally see on the screen, on the camera, where people stand in the tribe and that's what it looked like it looked like the three who'd been controlling the game had been absolutely alienated now and they've been pushed to that side although i wouldn't class aurora as controlling the game because she sort of just doesn't really have she doesn't know where her loyalty lies and she's sort of just been going with the floor over the past couple of weeks because obviously about what happened with joe and how she was sort of quite tight with joe so Aurora, I think, was sort of trying to show a tiny bit of loyalty to Julia and Gavin by staying with them. So she has the best chances she can get further on in the game. At this point in the Tribal Council, Jeff was literally sat there watching people and he didn't say a word. He was in utter shock and amazement, which I thought was... It's very rare to see. You, you, sometimes people say something and then Jeff goes like, whoa, and sort of sits back a bit. But we've never seen, well, as far as I can remember... I haven't ever seen Jeff sit in silence for so long and just let people hash it out. So this was th that was rare, very rare to see. So we, we were treated there. I also did notice in this tribal council that Victoria wasn't really being spoken to that much. She sort of, she was sort of moving from each side. She wanted to sort of play the field, sort of do what's best for her. That's what I have noticed as well throughout the season so far. Even though Victoria has shown loyalty to people, she is very conscious and she knows what's going on around her. I think she's a very good game player and I've got an immense, immense amount of respect for that because she is just trying to get through the night. She wants to make sure that she's okay because she, she's putting herself before her tribe. Uh, well, not a tribe, her alliance. So she, she can make sure she's safe for the night. More times of the tables turning, people. Devins tells Wardog and Wentworth that a truce could save them both. Now, this has gone from Devins blowing up at Wardog last week to sort of them sort of agreeing on a truce, which I thought was amazing to see. Wardog tells uh, Devins about the Aurora plan. He said that, how about we take out Aurora? 
Again, many names were being thrown up in the air. Nothing was set in stone just yet. Wentworth tells Julia, Aurora and Gavin that she wasn't trying trying to sort of turn on them or anything like that. She wants to get to the bottom of the plan and she was just asking them was there actually any sort of secrets going on because Wentworth was obviously in on the plan in the first place and she just wanted to see if she was being played or if there was any sort of thing that was going to blindside her. And then Julia was sort of saying, you know, essentially the plan was to take out David. It, it wasn't to, they, they weren't planning on blindsiding anyone. So Julia was sort of, again, wearing a heart on her chest. She was telling the truth there, fair play to her. Julie says that her and Ron will vote with Lesu. So at this point, we've seen Julia and Ron jump ship and go, yep, right, okay, it's 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 essential and we're definitely going to work with you now because you've definitely got our backs more than the karma, strong people. Even though Aurora's name was heavily rumoured throughout that tribal council, we then saw Julia's name being brought up. I'm pretty sure it was, was Julie who said, how about we take out Julia? And Wardog was like, say the name and we'll do it. And Ron was like, Julia. But then, straight away... Everyone stood up and started walking about. So Julia was sort of moving further towards them. She might find out. This point onward, my opinion changed on Ron. It was quite snaky what he did. They essentially brought up Julia's name and they were sort of discussing it amongst them. Ron wasn't sort of pushing it too much. Then Julia walks up and Ron was like, Julia, they're bringing up your name. How dare he do that? Julia left him out the loop last week, right? So then War Dog and that are helping him you know essentially get back in the loop and they're trying to save him and then he's selling them out by sucking up to julia i didn't like that i thought that was really really snaky war dog was trying to gain control again he was trying to take over as he always does he's sort of like yes i control the vote but i think sort of he is probably the most dominant person in this conversation at the moment in the deal because I think he's pushing it the most that he wants to get Aurora out. And then they started flipping onto a different name and he sort of lost a tiny bit of control. But he was trying to get, gain it back. Julie blows up at Gavin and Julia and tells them I'm out completely. And she then told them that she'd seen a lot of looks throughout the day that she hadn't turned a blind eye to. She had seen them. She didn't decide to bring it up then. But she decided to bring it up now. She said that she saw many sort of dodgy looks throughout the day. Everyone looking at each other sort of. And she was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah there's definitely something going on. Wentworth tells David that he was the target in the plan. So, plan's exposed now. All the cards are on the table. David now knows that Wentworth and the others were about to target him, really. So, David sort of, he didn't look shocked, but he was, I, th I think he was sort of like, wow, you know, uh, I think I, I sort of expected that coming across. He did say earlier on, his spidey senses told him, I'm being targeted, I need to use this idol, I need to speak to Devons, and obviously Devons did agree with him. Julia accuses Julie of throwing away the control to Lesu. She is basically saying, we have the perfect opportunity to control a vote here, but you're throwing it away to Lesu. That is lies from Julia, because Julia had a deal with the, with Lesu to vote someone to, to vote David out. So really, it's she wasn't throwing, <laughs> throwing the, uh, the, the, the power away to Lesu, because she had to deal with Lesu anyway. She wasn't going to vote with Karma, which I thought was pretty much a last-ditch effort to try and get Julie to come back to Karma. Speaking of power, Julie did reply that she has no controlling karma anyway, so why would she want to work with Julia and keep karma strong when she has no power anyway, which I thought was an extremely valid point. Julie then decided to run across to the other side of the council where Devons, David, Wentworth, Lauren, Wardog are all, they're all stood there and she was shouting, I'm ready to jump ship, and she continued to repeat that, which I thought was brilliant. This was like... The, the most mixed emotions I've ever seen in a tribal council. Like, Jeff sat there just to say nothing. I mean, he probably could have said a few things to sort of, you know, understand where things are. But I think he was so taken aback that he just he couldn't get any words in, pretty much. Aurora was trying to persuade Julie to come back, but Julie wasn't taking any of it. She, she, she had decided by then, there's no way I'm working with you a lot. I'm done. Ron, again, very nervous, as I said earlier. Please don't vote me out. I don't want to be sent home. Listen to the game, Ron. Not to, your, not to your brain telling you that you're going home. Julia was telling Julie that you can trust her. Why is she doing that? Like, she's she's wasting her time. I thought, Julia, you've dug your grave now and you must lie in it. You can't persuade Julie to come to trust you after you just left her out of the loop last week. I thought, you brought this on yourself, sister. Devons was sort of interrupting them when Julia said, Julia, you need to trust me. Devons went, how can she trust you when you didn't even vote with her last week? 
and Julia then goes, oh, Devins, you weren't even the target, so I don't know what you're on about. And then Devins was like, oh, Julia, I might have, might not have been the target, but I'm in the pilot seat and I'm trying to drive. And I thought, yes, Devins, get your revenge. Because Julia called him a passenger le- uh, earlier, and now Devins just took the he took the driver's seat and he's now the pilot and he's he's taken over, which I thought was brilliant. Jeff was stunned and shocked when Devins said that, which I thought was, once again, absolutely amazing. So, everyone sat back down at this point and War Dog said, right, let's vote. And Julia aggressively said, shut up, War Dog. And I thought, ooh, ooh, this is getting intense. Again, everyone was gasping in the jury and the tribe. So, at this point, everyone sat down. Ron and Gavin get up and start whispering to each other again. But then, eventually, everyone sits back down again and they are ready to vote. Phew, I can breathe now. I've finally explained everything that happened to the Tribal Council, so it's time to vote. Now I'm going to pretend to be Jeff and say, I'll go tally the votes. Right, first vote, David. That's one vote for David. Second vote, Wentworth. That's one vote for Wentworth. Third vote, Julia. That's one vote for Julia. Fourth vote, Julia. That's two votes for Julia. Fifth vote, Julia. That's three. Sixth vote, Julia. That's four for Julia. Seventh vote, also goes to Julia, that's five votes, Julia. And eighth vote, Julia. That's six votes, that's enough. Julia has been voted out of the tribe. What a roller coaster of emotions that tribal council was. Straight after, we saw lots of people celebrating that they managed to get Julia out. Julia, she didn't seem sour. She literally just told them, well done, guys. And I think she took it quite well. Julia then got to the sign and decided, yep, I'm taking the torch, and she went to the edge of extinction. So now we have Julia also on the edge of extinction. That was an immense tribal council. I'm going to sort of sum this up quickly. I'm, I'm going to say every single episode, we're seeing different people step up to the play and becoming good game players because one week you're sort of seeing some people being the best game player and the next week they're the worst game player and also vice versa, which I think is brilliant to see. So it's, it's going to be... Even harder, I think, to decide who's going to be the sole survivor this season. But I, for one, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I can't wait to see whose gameplay is going to get worse and whose is going to get better. So I'll quickly go over the vote and who voted for, for each person. Okay, so the one vote for David was from Aurora. And the one vote for Kelly Wentworth was from Julia. And the rest of the votes, Ron, Lauren, Gavin, Wardog, Julie, David, Victoria, Devons and Kelly, they all went for Julia. So... Everyone banded together and decided to get Julia out, apart from Aurora and Julia herself. Let's briefly talk about next week. We saw in the scenes that there's more alliances being made and more alliances being broken. Devons and Victoria potentially are going to be working together and Wardog's name, I think, was the only person thrown around as a target. Obviously, it's only like a little clip that we can see, so there's probably going to be more names than just Wardog being thrown around. But I can't wait. If last week's, well, this, well, this week's episode is anything to go by, next week is going to be absolutely brilliant. Thank you everyone for watching. I really, really appreciate this. I can't believe I'm on episode four of this podcast already. Episode eight of Survivor Edge of Extinction, but episode four of the podcast. Please remember to check out the Twitter. I'll give you a follow back if you do. I would really I really appreciate all the support that I'm getting. I think it's it's amazing. I was glad to see the views go up as well on last week's episode, which I thought was great. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to say all the cliche stuff as usual. Please like, please comment, and please subscribe and please share. I would really appreciate it as it would be doing me a massive favour. I've been your host, Tom Vasey. Good night.